Rush, Fabio. That one wobbled up. Quinn Rampage, Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the Answer, Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Divide, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, going to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner, brought to you by Fast Cash Title Loans and Fox Sports Radio 920. My name is Billy Mira, joined by my partners Phil Devine and Joey Varner. And join us as we have an interview in just a few minutes with Tyrone Spong, who is making his MMA debut with World Series of Fighting November 3rd here in Vegas. And also, Daniel Cormier is joining us later in the show to get his thoughts on the cancellation of the Strike Force November 3rd card and what his future holds. We'll also get into the announcements of Season 17 of the Ultimate Fighter Coaches announced along with a Super Fight finale in April of 2013. Plus all the latest MMA news and gossip. But first, let's recap. Last Saturday night, UFC 153. Anderson Silva, Stefan Bonner. Bonner gets t code round one. Who's next for Silva? Is GSP next? And do you think that's an easier fight? I do. I don't know if it's easier. I mean, he's fighting GSP. George St. Pierre, dude. <laughs> yeah, and GSP, uh, uh, I think that, first of all, I think that fight needs to take place before a Jones fight does, just for the legacy factor. Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre have been the two most dominating forces in their weight classes for the last seven, eight years. Jones, new to the sport, he is establishing his dominance, but it's not quite legacy status yet. I want to see GSP. I want to see GSP Anderson, and I don't think it's an easy fight for him. I mean, GSP, in my opinion, has the best wrestling in mixed martial arts. And that would be a problem for Silva. It would. Yeah. I, I mean, I think so. You know, I, I, I never want to say anything against Silva. I don't, I don't want to want to say <laughs> GSP could take it down because he, anytime I say anything, he just proves me wrong, you know? So, but I, I think GSP will give him a fight. Oh, I, I, I think so too. And I think it's funny that Anderson seems to agree with a lot of people saying that the GS, that's the fight he wants because he thinks that's an easier fight. Uh, I, 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 I disagree. I don't think it's an easier, I don't think either fight. Would be easy, right? You know, but when I look at Anderson Silva, the only thing that you can really say is, dude, this guy is the greatest fighter it's, there is. Wow, he, like he is wow. the greatest fighter that ever lives. He did nothing but toy with Stefan Bonner. I mean, when he backed himself up against the cage and pretty much said, "Go ahead, do what you want. I'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead. Here's a head start." <laughs> And That's exactly what it was. It was nothing. like two kids racing, one going, I'll give you a head start. It was the, tur- it was the tortoise versus the hare. That's <laughs> you know, what it is. It looked like he was at the gym, practicing at his gym, in some green up-and-comer kid. He said, okay, I'll let you play with the champ, you know? <laughs> And that's exactly what it looked like. He looked like he was going against someone that he knew he was light years ahead of, and he was just going to have some fun. He didn't look like he was even in a real fight. He looked like he was just at the gym, relaxed, having fun, toying with some newbie. Yeah. And it, just and, beasting and, them. And for – a guy like Stefan Bonner, who we've talked about it in the past, had never been stopped. He'd never been submitted, never been knocked out. His only time he'd ever been, you know, not to a decision and a loss was it would two cuts yeah. against Machida and uh, Sosinski. So it's like you knew that you know what a tough guy he is, especially against these two oh fivers, and then Anderson to come in and ab- when he decided when, let's get that straight. When Anderson decided to end the fight. That's what it was. It wasn't like, oh, you know, there's my opening. It's like, okay, I'm done now. Now I'm going to finish this fight. And he gave Stefan such a knee to the solar plexus. Did you hear Stefan? He's like, I was paralyzed. I was paralyzed. I was Dude, paralyzed. I paralyzed. It hurt me watching it. <laughs> it was nasty. That's when, all I can I went nasty. to the freezer, got some ice, and started icing my chest. Like, ah, I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, that's why when I, I look at this fight and they talk about Anderson Silver going up against George St. Pierre, and I know you guys say he's got such strong wrestling, but... I just see him as being such – he's just at the top of his game. He finishes fights. I don't see GSP being that type of fighter, and I still – I think it is an easier fight for him. I really do. I don't I don't think it's going to go that much different than a lot of other Anderson Silva fights. Easier than – John Jones? John, absolutely. Oh, I think it would be easier than John Jones for. I mean, if you if you put them side by side. That's what I mean. That's what I say. Is but this I don't an think easy it's fight? An easy fight. No, it's no, easier listen, than it's two. It's not going to be easy. Because with John Jones, you got a guy that's that's if you took Anderson Silva and combined him with George St. Pierre, you get John Jones. The long
29. Oh, so there's no way that he could have fathered him with Joe. So, <laughs> so I mean, it was a possibility. It was a possibility. I'm but, not impressed with your joke. You are, you no, but you are so dead on though. He is, you know, he's a combination of the two. He's got the wrestling of George St. Pierre and he's got just the absolute dominance of Anderson Silva. And the thing about Silva is every time you think you've seen it all from him, you don't. He just keeps coming with something different. I mean, like we said about this Stefan Bonner, you, he's never been stopped, never been, you know, he's never been this, he's never been that. And he just takes him down at will. It was just like he just snapped his fingers and then Stefan Bonner laying on the ground. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, he's Anderson's never faced a fighter like George St. Pierre either. We're talking about his wrestling, but you got to remember, this dude has excellent striking. His footwork is phenomenal. He's so light on his toes. He's so long and fast with that jab and that in and out movement. I don't see him being a stationary target for Anderson to pick off. I see him dancing around, moving, firing that jab from long range, doing that damage-free style of fighting that he's become so efficient at, and using that to set up his takedowns. I think he can and will take down and put, put Anderson Silva on his back. Now, Anderson's being Anderson, you know, and I've always said if they fought, I would pick George St. Pierre to win. Um, I'm um, le yeah, leery to do that now just because of what Anderson's done and, and who he's become and how he's... He's just getting better with every single fight. But GSP will make this a fight. He will take Anderson down. And, and, and Anderson never has fought anyone like George, stylistically. There's no one out there like George. With that style, with that, with that smooth boxing, with that long jab, with that excellent footwork, with that explosive double leg that just... I mean, when you look at the, 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 the guys he's taken down, the wrestling credentials, the people he's taken down, he's out-wrestled some of the best wrestlers on paper in all of mixed martial arts. Yeah, and, and he takes them down at will. At will, dude. dude yeah, he, George St. Pierre is would be an amazing fight against Anderson Silva. But, Billy, I agree with you on the one fact that that's not the fight I want to see. After watching what Anderson has done in the 205-pound division, I mean, think about it. Then Stefan Forrest, well, Forrest might have been at the time, but they're not top 10 guys in the 205-pound division. But to go through them all in the first round and make it look so easy, I would really want to see him facing a guy like John Jones, who has, let's be honest, last year, the greatest year in the history of mixed martial arts, facing four yes. top 10 guys who were all past their prime by the way let's be honest rampage ain't the rampage that fought in pride shogun ain't the shogun that fought in, fought in pride uh machida ain't been the same since he got hit by by shogun machida's shown he does not like to get hit i mean he it's true you know he's fought guys who aren't who aren't the beast they once were you know a lot, well, a lot of guys came over from pride and weren't the beast that they once no were. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> different supplement regimen yeah. over here huh <laughs> No, but giving it, out like M and M's over there. Yeah, <laughs> for me though, it boils down to the the pecking order. Anderson's number one, GSP's number two. Anderson has to get to GSP to get to John Jones. I think. I think that's the next fight in order. I, I want to see John Jones, and I tell you what, I'm more. Uh, I'm very excited to see that fight, but I just think the next fight in order needs to be GSP. My only problem is the weight. Is George going to come up a, a, a tremendous 78, amount? 78. That's that's the catch weight. But, you know, like Silva, I know before the fight, he was saying that that was his goal, was to fight, you know, uh, George St. Pierre next. And, you know, Dana now, Dana's been saying, hey, listen, this is the fight I want is Bones and Silva. So and he said, you know, Anderson no, he didn't said, say I want that. He, he said, said I'll, I'll make, make it I'll make that happen. So he's Dana's been campaigning for the GSP fight, but what he said was an address to the comments that Anderson said he'd never fight John Jones, and Dana said, no, I'll make that happen. I'll throw some money at them that he won't be able to refuse. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. That's ex no, no, you're right. That That's is what exactly he said. What but he Dana, said. but Dana has said that he wants the St. Pierre fight next. I, I would have liked the St. Pierre fight like. Two years ago, I'm still like you know. I yeah, wish it would have happened already. Now we, we don't. First off, let's we don't know how George is going to come back. George may not That's even beat thing. Carlos. Yeah, it's we still. I I, I think you're off your meds on that one. I, ne <laughs> I well, never what's, I what's never go off the meds. <laughs> how, about some money? The how about a money weight? What are the right odds here? on that though? What are the odds? Is is I think GSP was a three to one favorite before. I, now, I don't know. I don't mean to bring up anybody by the name of Matt Serra, though, and everybody thought we were. Sunshine's everybody was crazy. on a dog's ass some days. Yeah, well, as George St. Pierre said himself, there's no such thing as a lucky punch. So you never know. Anything could, uh, can and will happen. But I, I don't know. You know, I've even gone this far as to say Anderson. So problem that Chris Weidman would give Anderson four to Silver one. This problem. Four to one of the four odds to on one that. Is the odds. On what? Wow. On, on Condit, on Condit St. Pierre. The thing is this, Condit, he's really evolved as a mixed martial artist, but 
to get his counter wrestling skills to where they need to be to stop the best wrestler in mixed martial arts, I don't see him doing that. I don't see him having the time. I don't see him facing the competition that has made his defensive wrestling adapt. I mean, you look at you look at who's fought in the UFC and what he's done. He hasn't really had to step up and face some of the top tier wrestlers. And his last loss in the UFC was to Cameron. And how did Cameron beat him? He yeah, outwrestled. He, him. Out-wrestled he him. took him down. And that wasn't too long ago. And then in regards to the weight class issues. Wasn't that his first fight in the UFC? Yeah, and uh, he was the WC champ when they first moved. Dude, Martin Campman has always been the welcome wagon for the W for the uh, UFC. Bro, Martin's a beast, dude. He's been the welcome wagon. He's, you know, if you're gonna survive in the in the UFC, you got to get through somebody like Martin Campman. Shields was his first fight. Oh, and, man, that fight kills me. Yeah. Oh, that, but he but won but that. but back to the weight issue with GSP and Anderson. Five years ago. Anderson fought at 170. Oh, in the absolutely. Rock tournament. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. And he, GSP walks around. 195, 200. He's, he's, I mean, so to, for Anderson to make 178 and for George to not be tremendously undersized against him is not a far cry. I mean, that's, that's not a long shot. Yeah. I just, I mean, I, I just think those days are past Anderson of making that, you know, going down, cutting the weight. I, I don't think he, he wants to drop down any more than 185. I, I really don't think he does. If Anderson goes and beats GSP, or excuse me, goes and beats John Jones, who's so young and new to the sport, it's going to be attributed to the fact that it's new to the sport. And if that fight happens, I don't see the GSP super fight happening after that. George is on his way out, three or four maybe, a couple more, you know. Anderson too. Anderson too. And yeah. I really think that if we're going to get super fights going and, and they're going to happen, GSP is the one that needs to be done. Because if he doesn't fight him and it never happens, there's always going to be that, no, nah, GSP would have beat him. I agree with you. I agree that. with you in the pecking order of fights. I just think it won't be. Uh, I I still think it'll be Anderson Silva that comes out on top in that fight. That's just my opinion. Uh, you know what? Let's just. I'd like to see either one. I just yeah. want to see. I just, it just want to see because we've been deprived of so many super deprived. fights. No, in, in, well, in how long did sports, it ta- how long boxing. did it take for for Vandalay yeah. and Chuck? I mean, we were <laughs> we were given that four times on a silver platter before it actually took place. Right. You know, it kept being teased and teased, and and then the fight came along, and it was like, oh yeah, it was a great fight, but it was five years too late. And then it was Chuck had already been he had already been knocked out. He'd already lost. You know, he kind of his his his. Star that aura had, was yeah, gone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Vandalay's too because he got knocked out by Henderson previously in Pride, so exactly. it was like it was gone. Yeah. Uh, now, other standout fights of the night: John Fitch versus Eric Silva. Now, I got to say, after watching this fight, I have a newfound respect for John Fitch. Well, wait. For, I mean, first thing, John Fitch, fight of the night. Awesome fight of the Words night. You thought you'd never say fight right. of the night. No, I mean, he re, uh, he put on a clinic. Yeah, he looked he, he shut masterful. Ma- he, he really he did. Big brothered Eric Silva in that like. I want to go so far to big brother in the last round. The last that round. second round was all Eric Silva, S- and that took it out of him. See, I, I think that yes, Silva won the second round. Fitch won the first. Silva won the second. But I think that third round was such a dominant round by Fitch. Like I was surprised that you know, maybe it was because of Brazil that there wasn't a ten eight by somebody in that round. I don't know if it was that dumb. I thought it was. Uh, he looked like he just took the will right out of that boy. He did. Beat he him. was like, you know what? You took. I mean, he was like that bully in the schoolyard, like taking his lunch money, sitting on top of him, giving him purple nurples, <laughs> freaking wet willies. <laughs> it was. It was bad. Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, slapping him. You know. Um, but another impressive Glover was impressive the other night. Mm. You know what? Glover was impressive, but I don't. I think I was more impressed by the heart of Maldonado. Well, he needs and a new he, name, and he clipped him. He put Glover Big on time. the was a point. Yeah. Big I, I never, after I saw that, I was like, I'm never, this guy, I'm not counting him out of this fight. This guy, if Glover keeps opening up like that and he's reckless and kind of getting sloppy, this dude can clip his chin. This dude can put him to sleep. I was, frankly, I was upset they stopped it. And so I it was Glover. To, yeah. So he, he wanted it to go longer. He thought it should have. And you know, Maldonado wanted it to go longer. That guy's, Jeez, his tough. new nickname we already have a Korean one. He's the Brazilian zombie. <laughs> For him to k- keep coming and just take those shots, there were quite a few times that that could have been stopped. But oh, yeah, it, you know, he wanted so. it. He wanted it to keep going. Do you think Fabio Maldonado is one of those guys that can actually keep evolving as a mixed martial artist and maybe come back and be one of those dominant? Uh, he's got fighters? the chin. No. He's got the chin. He's got the boxing. Oh, you know, I, but I, I, think I don't he's know. A Mark Hunt. I think he's a Mark Hunt. He, once you get him on the ground? Yeah, I just think it's too late in the game for him to really evolve. His, so you his think he's wrestling. too late in the game? You don't but, think he'll evolve all that much from here on? But I, I think that he he's a guy who was 
exciting, entertaining matchups. He's a guy that you can put in there and will give a great show and look great doing it and has a nice style that's aesthetically pleasing to watch whether he's winning or losing. You choose the matchups right, and he could be a fan favorite. Just like I equate him to like the same as Mark Hunt, you know, a guy who's too late in the game to see him evolve to really add any depth to his wrestling or jits game. But to someone you match him up with the right fights, they're very entertaining and pleasing to watch. Yeah, you know who uh, impressed me the most the other night? Damian Maya. Although, you know, I know we, we were talking he about... He impressed you the most out of everyone on that did. card. He, well, I already knew that Anderson was the greatest fight. I just didn't know what he would do. All right? Noguera, we knew if he took Herman down, it was going to end. Fitch was impressive in his fight. But Damian Maya, the way he handled Rick Story... Rick Story is a guy who's never been stopped. He's beaten guys like uh, Tiago Alves, uh, who, who, he, uh, Jake... Um, What's his name? Johnny. Johnny Hendricks. I thought he lost that fight. Though. I got to go on record because Johnny's my boy. I thought he lost that fight. But, it, you know, he Rick Story. the division's best. He, he, he's a tough, tough guy. All right? And for Damian Maia to go in there and manhandle him the way he did, that neck crank, that faucet of blood just shooting out Dude, his nose. Dude, it wasn't even a neck crank. It wasn't even a choke. He smashed his jaw. You know you can actually break someone's jaw like oh, that? Oh, absolutely. That's why most guys during grappling sessions, they're wearing mouth guards so you don't bite that or crush your jaw. No, I mean, it's but the pressure there, he just abandoned the choke and said, I'm just going to crush your face. That's exactly what he did. And you saw at that point when the blood just kind of spurred it out and started drooling, like, he got his face crushed. Yeah. Now, I mean, now that's two two big wins at 170. I mean, we know what happened in the first one. Uh, I think Kim, you know, tore something in his side. That's why the fight was stopped so quickly. He looked impressive here. I'd like to see him against top-notch competition, though, in the welterweight division. I want to see him against someone with a solid wrestling background and a solid striking background. I, we were talking off-air yeah. off about Jake Ellenberger, Fitch, John Fitch. Koscheck. Koscheck would be great. I'd love to see him and Koscheck. You know who I want to see fight John Fitch next? Who's that? He's on the shelf. They said if he wants to get a title shot, he has to get a win against a big con- uh, a big contender. Josh uh, J- uh, John Fitch is a big contender. I'd love to see Nick Diaz Fitch. That would be You a- know what? Yes. You know, it, I think Fitch would that man. I, that's my, that's the problem. Like that Roy Markham. I think it would be just like if the GSP it, fight had happened. I think it would be like Roy Markham versus Nate Diaz. That's yep, what I think. Take or I'd love, to see, I'd love to see Damian versus Rory or or Nick versus Rory. You know Nick would want revenge on Rory for what he did to his brother. Uh, and Rory is such a beast. Beast. He's dude. a beast. Like, that's <laughs> He's another, a big I mean, kid. I, I can't wait to find out what happens with him and Penn. Like that. That's going to be a, a very fun fight. And I... I <laughs> I, I was talking to somebody about this earlier today. That card is stacked. That Fox card, oh, that, sick, that final yeah. Fox card. I don't know if you've looked at it, Billy, but you got Gustafson and, and Hua. You got Diaz and Henderson for the belt. You got BJ Matt, and Rory. BJ and Rory and my, uh, Matt Brown against Mike Swick. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Matt Brown's in for trouble in that fight, but great fight. You know, just the whole card. They're really building it up. This is gonna that last Fox card is gonna be off the charts. Yeah, absolutely. Looking now, forward to it. And we didn't talk about the big nog Dave Herman fight, did we? Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> what, what did we learn? Yeah, no. What did we learn? That BJJ, BJJ actually works. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what? And nog getting submission of the night. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was interesting that. Herman this whole time talking about how jiu-jitsu doesn't work and he'd never been submitted and it's not going to happen to him. And, you know, he trains with Team Quest, guys like Dan Henderson. And Dan Henderson, you know his grappling ability and you know he's never like hardly ever been submitted except for three times in this illustrious career he's had. Twice. Three. No, twice to Nogueira. Twice and, to well, uh, no, get two Nogueira brothers, right? One Nogueira brother. One, oh, twice to him. Twice to the same one. And then he lost to uh, Anderson Silva, Silva who's Black a Nogueira belt. black belt. Yeah. yeah. So, we're, you know, like... Jiu-Jitsu clearly does work, or Noguera Jiu-Jitsu clearly works on Dave Herman. You know, I was watching the fights with uh, Gray Maynard and Luke Rockhold, and Rockhold was telling me, uh, he's, he, Rockhold's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, he's legit, and he was like, but he even said that about Herman, he's like, dude, he's freaky, you know, I put him in the weirdest positions, I, I get him in arm locks, you know, and he just doesn't tap out, but I guess it doesn't apply when you grapple Noguera. Yeah, he, I, that fight was just weird. Like, I, I thought that fight was weird. Like, Herman kept getting clipped. Like, he just left his chin out for him. And I, I think he was just, t- you know, hey, see if you can knock me out. I don't know. But I think Noguera just owned Herman the whole fight. Owned him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, d- but is Big Nog back, would you say? I don't know if he's back, but he, he he's a guy that I don't think he's ever going to be a title contender, a threat. But he's a guy that you can match up and sell sell fights for. You know, sell fun, especially interesting. In Brazil. <laughs> especially this dude's a living legend in Brazil. He's, you know, you 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 hear the crowd go nuts when they bring him out. I mean, you can sell fights with him for. He's got a good four or five more fights in him at least. I think sellable, and you can match him up right too. Yeah. No. Absolutely. You, you definitely you can match up Nogueira and put. 
let, let him fight in Brazil the rest of his career. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, let, no. Seriously, let him fight in Brazil yeah, the rest of his fight, career. Let him fight the cards, yeah. Absolutely. He doesn't have many more in him. Let him do it. All right, we got to go to break right now. The MMA Fight Corner is sponsored by Fast Cash Title Loans uh, with rates at 9.95% and three great locations. Our man Mike DeChow will not be beat or undersold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456 and tell them that Billy sent you. We come back. There'll be interviews with Tyrone Spong. He should be on the line as well when we get back. Daniel Cormier is supposed to join us, plus so much more. Don't go anywhere. Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Stop. Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Look, hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training nowhere so whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape learn boxing kickboxing wrestling grappling jujitsu oh and i almost forgot they have great kid classes as well extreme couture is the place for you no matter what skill level you're at trust me i know it helped me get my butt right back into shape call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today call 702-616-1022 that number again is 702-616-1022 you'll be glad you did i know i was what's up fight fans wondering where to go in the mma fight corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV, go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Hey, this is Rick Franklin, and you're listening to the MMA Fight Corner. The MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You know, uh, we have uh, some interviews coming up for you shortly. Shortly. But to get back real quick to UFC 153, the fight that we didn't talk about, another dominating performance was uh, Phil Davis. Yeah, Phil Davis just put on a grappling clinic. Another one. <laughs> yeah, <A clinic. laughs> but let's let's be honest, though. Who was he in there with? I mean, I, I'm a Phil Davis fan. I like to see him succeed. But again, he's fighting a guy that really had no business to be, be in the cage with Phil Davis in the first place. This guy, Prada, was 8-0. But you look at his his eighth win was, was against a guy who was 1-3. His seventh win was against a guy who was 1-2. His sixth win was against a guy who was 3-9. I mean... Here's a guy. Now, granted, I love seeing this out of Brazil because you don't see it in the states much. Like like grooming their fighters, like you do in boxing. You know, in boxing here, they give you three or four guys that you should smash on, give you a semi challenge, give you another three or four that you should smash on, and then a semi challenge, and so on and so on until they develop you as a fighter. You got ring time. You got, you you patted your record. You're confident. You got some knockouts. You know. And they can sell you, and you're ready for the big challenges. So Brazil does a great job of doing that. Eric Silva's a guy like that when you look at his record as well, um, who's got a lot of wins on there against people that are you know, not the best competition. But Prado, in my opinion, had zero point being in there with Phil Davis. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, you know, padding the record doesn't work in MMA. No, no, not, you here. Know, not when you make it to the UFC. No, not in the UFC. No, it makes it, it works in MMA, but not when you make it to the UFC. When you make it to the UFC, you're taking on, you could take on a, a top 10 fighter at any given moment, and you better be ready. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I told you uh, we were going to have an interview with Tyrone Spung, and joining us in the fight corner is Tyrone Spung, who will be making his MMA debut November 3rd against Travis Barlett in the World Series of Fighting at Planet Hollywood on NBC Sports. Welcome to the show, Tyrone. Hi, right, thank you guys for having me. Uh, thank you for joining us. Now, I got to ask you, how, how excited are you not only to, to be making your MMA debut, but you are making your MMA debut on NBC in an organization that's making its debut. Oh, I'm I'm very excited. You know, uh, first of all, 
uh, I feel very blessed uh, to to be healthy and 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 to be ready for November the third. I uh, want to put on a good show, and uh, especially you know, uh, being my MMA debut and 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 for the first time immediately being on on NBC. That's you know, it's it's like a dream coming true. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, now, what was the deciding factor to make the transition and the leap into MMA? Um, first of all, I, I, I came down here to, to help Rashad Evans out for, for his training camp. Um, and wrestling and uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and all the coaches and, and my teammates. Um, they saw, you know, that I had a, a, a big potential and, and that I picked up all the techniques very fast. And also, you know, uh, I, I lost the motivation a little bit in, in kickboxing, uh, since I'm, you know, I'm a nine time world champion kickboxing in six different weight classes. And, um, the K1 was going bad, you know, um, and the K1 was at that moment was the biggest organization and, uh, they were going bad, you know, they couldn't, you know, fulfill all the payments and stuff like that. And, um, I was just not really that motivated anymore. And this was something new. And, um, you know, uh, I, I got my motivation back, started training real hard again, and here I am. Yeah, well, I mean, I know you signed recently a, a four-fight deal with Glory. So I believe you yeah. are continuing your kickboxing career, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. You know, um, at the moment, Glory um, didn't exist yet. You know, they, 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 just, uh, they just rise up. Uh, from you know uh, in the in the kickboxing scene, and they did it, and they're right away the biggest organization. Now they signed the best strikers in the world, you know, and uh, it's a it's a real big league, and um, they just did me an offer I couldn't refuse, you know. So uh, and and being a guy that that you know needs a challenge in life. Uh, this was something, you know, that I, that I wanted to do because they have the best strikers in the world. And for me to compete with those guys, uh, you know, that's, that's in my nature. Well, now that Glory is around and you did sign the, the, uh, contract with them, a four fight deal, um, is that, does that take precedence over MMA? What's that? Is that, is that, does that take precedence over the MMA career? You know, is this something you're going to MMA, something you're just sticking your fi- your foot in the water to see no, if you no, like no, it? No, 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 no. This is just to, 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 to overcome that gap. You know, you, you, you first of all, we're all prize fighters. You know, we, we fight and of course you, you, you fight for the, for the honor and, and, and for the recognition worldwide. But at the same time, you have to pay your bills and, you know, we, we need a lift. So, uh, Glory, uh, did me a good offer. They're playing real good. And in MMA, I'm just starting out. So for me being, this is a win-win situation for me. Um, I can, I can, you know, make good money while I'm still, you know, um, getting into my MMA career. And, uh, but, but it's, it's, it's not something I'm just trying out. You know, I'm not the type of guy. Just to try something out. If I do something, I want to do it good, and um, I want to be champion in MMA. Yeah, well, you're training with a hell of a team down in Florida, the Black Zillions. I mean, if yeah. I mean the team that they've put together is is absolutely amazing. And uh, a guy that's a- also stepping into MMA, uh, Baralio Istama, is yeah. now doing MMA, and he's been training with you. Uh, yeah. How does that help that the both of you are transitioning from different sports where you're both elite and can help each other? Oh, it, 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 you know, I, I benefit of it a lot. You know, he, he's a, he's a monster. That guy, he, he's a bully on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bully. I'm a bully standing up. So we bully each other and, and we help each other out, you know, but you got, you got so many big champions in a gym, you know, in, in a, this team, you know, you got uh, Rashad Evans, you got Alistair Overeem, you got Braulio, George Santiago, Anthony Rumble. Uh, you, we, we can go on. The list goes on, you know, and everybody has, has his, Assets, you know, to the team, and 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 um, the, we all have our, our qualities. And the, the 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 good thing about it is that everybody in this team helps, you know, helps each other out. You know, absolutely. 
Now, you, you've heard many times, uh, Tyrone, that people say that wrestling is one of the most important backgrounds to have in the sport of mixed martial arts. And we, we've seen wrestlers like uh, Daniel Cormier come over, and he took to the striking game like a fish to water. How has, how has your uh, progression as a martial artist been learning the art of wrestling? Oh, um, I have to say it's, it's going pretty well. I have to say, you know, uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a natural, you know, uh, uh, athlete and I pick it up real fast. And, um, I have to say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm satisfied about how it's going right now. Uh, of course, you can't say like in a year, oh, I'm, a, I'm a top wrestler, but, you know, I'm getting there and, um, I have everything to do it. You know, I have the capabilities. I have the physique and, uh, the mentality. To, to, to pull it off. So it's on me to, to, to showcase and then to, to let everybody see what I'm about. At this point in your, your career, in, in your learning of the sport, are you focusing on you know more just being sprawl and brawl and defensive with your wrestling? Or is there a chance we see you implement a, a shot of your own, you know, using some of your striking to set up a takedown? No, I, I think, you know, uh, you have to work on your overall game, you know. Otherwise, it's, you're going to be a one-dimensional fighter. And, uh, you know, it's like a book. You know, I, I see everything, uh, I, I try to break everything down for myself very simple. It's like a book. You, you, you don't start the book just in the middle. You, you know, you start at, at the beginning, right. and then you read the whole book. So even with this, you start at the basics and you work your, yourself throughout the whole uh, system of all the techniques and everything. You know, so um, I'm, I'm just working on everything, you know, so you will see me taking guys down. I love it. I love it. And you know what? So many guys and so many men, women, people that work for a living dream of actually getting to fight their bosses. And you actually, you've actually fought your boss. You yeah. fought Ray <laughs> Seppel before in a K one match, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I met, I met with Ray in the in the ring. Yeah, that's correct. What's it like uh, signing with an organization with someone like Ray Seffo at the helm, who you know was a fighter, was a world champion, and understand what it goes like to be a professional fighter? Oh, I think it's 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 real good because um, he, as as the, the president of the organization, he understands us. You know, he knows what we're going through, the training, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so I think it's a good thing, um, and 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 you know, we it's it's mutual respect. I respect him too. You know, I respect Ray. Uh, he's a real gentleman, and um, I'm not nothing bad to say about Ray. I'm 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 real positive about him, and I'm just happy that he's the president of, of that organization. Yeah, that, that's interesting because Ray was he the deciding factor in you signing with the World Series of Fighting? Because I know that there was talks about beforehand you signing with yeah. another organization. Yeah, tight, yeah. Right? Tight. yeah. Also, also, you know, um, like I said, uh, Ray is a real gentleman, and if he says something, he makes sure that it that he gets it done, and. um you know, um, as as a little kid growing up uh, in in the kickboxing sport, I saw him and you know saw him fighting, and he, he never changed. He's he's a he's a real, you know, he's a, just a real gentleman. And 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 for me to fight him eventually, and uh, you know, we had a fight, and it was a great fight. And now me me working together with him, it's it's just you know, it's it's like a, a funny story, but it's it's, it's just good. It's yeah, a marriage it's, made in heaven. You guys know each other well. Yeah, and, yeah, we know each other very well. Yeah, Ray is a great guy. You know, no, he's no awesome. I, I was I was in Vegas uh, just a, a few weeks ago, and um, I just gave him a call like, "Hey, Ray, I'm I'm in town. You know, um, let's train together." And he was like, "Okay, you know," and and he helped me out with my training. So we we're, we're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He not only is he a great fighter, Ray Sappho, and a legend. He's also a great coach as well. Yeah, he's yeah. actually he he's put been. together a great squad over at Extreme Couture, working with the likes of of Jay Haran, uh, Martin, Martin Cameron, you know, and th there's a, a few Brad Tavares as well yeah. who's looking sharp. So he's got he's got a, a good thing going right now as a, as a yeah. fighter turned trainer turned uh, president of a, of a fight promotion. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. and it yeah. couldn't happen to a better guy, Ray Sappho. No, really, Ray. really. Now you, you talk about having this fight coming up November third. You're fighting Travis Barlett. How much do you know about Barlett? Uh, you know, I don't know too much about him. My opponent changed a few times. You know, I was supposed to to face uh, Houston Alexander. Uh, he pulled off. You know, I, I, my opponent changed like four times. So I don't know too much about him. You know, but. Um, you know, he, he took the fight, so that makes uh, that makes me think that he's uh, pretty confident and that he's sure about his game. So I just uh, I just got to show up ready. 
Now, Tyrone, before we wrap up, do you have any predictions for the fight coming up on November 3rd? Pain. 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 <laughs> any predictions. It's going to be a tremendous night, you know. Uh, a lot of great fighters on the card. Uh, I don't want to do too much smack talking, but uh, just, you know, for all the people out there, um, just tune in because everybody knows with Tyrone Spong, you can't go wrong. So just tune in, and I'm going to put on a great show for you guys. Awesome. Uh, great. Yeah. Well, we really look forward to seeing you fight on November 3rd. And as a matter of fact, I know there's listeners out there right now, and if you want to win two tickets to come see Tyrone fight on November 3rd, call 702-365-9200, and we'll give you two tickets to go to that fight on November 3rd happening on NBC Sports. Tyrone, thanks so much for joining us. And I said, after you get the W, you come back and you join us right back here in the MMA Fight Corner. Okay. Thank you guys for having me. All the guys, call and support the organization. Come and watch us bang, okay? No Great doubt. Yeah. All right. It's a fun fight card that night. You it's got Olovsky. I'm you excited got Miguel to see Torres. Him, though, man. His making his debut. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome fight card. And there's uh, nothing, now, nothing no, else going now on, I right? I need to go to that. I, I was kind of sad. You know, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I had to watch my boy DC put it, you know, do his thing, but... Looks like uh, no. Looks like November third is clear, so I'll be at World Series of Fighting. Yeah, nothing going on that night. Yeah, <laughs> no. I was actually going to go to the World Series of Fighting in DVR uh, Strike Force, but I was kind of afraid that if I went to, if I was at the fights, someone would be telling me. That's always my problem. Like this past weekend, I went to the Lion fights over at the Hard Rock, but it was on the same time as the pay per view. Tell me by the how, 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 by the way, how that all worked out, how that was. The fights, yeah, they were fun. It was awesome. They were fun. Great they, card. They, they, it was a good card. They Lots always deliver. Fun. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, Joe Schilling was on the card. Uh, How did he do? He got knocked out pretty much. Yeah. Again? Oh, again. He, got, yeah. he, 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 he was manhandling the boy, too. Just got clipped. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, was, wow. it, was, it was ruthless. And did our own Heidi Fang have a good time Saturday night or what? I don't know if she had a good time. She was commentating. Yeah. How did everything work out? It was, was awesome, step man. O- step over, <laughs> Heidi. Step, step over. Step over. To- I was really enjoying myself. Lion fights was fun. Uh, you know, Schilling was actually beating down Eddie Walker there for the first round and had him knocked down twice in the match. And then uh, all of a sudden, Walker comes back in the second round. Bam! Lays him out. It was ridiculous. Wow. Was that some of your official uh, professional commentating skills that right there? That was not <laughs> uh, my official commentary. And all of a sudden, <laughs> bam! Bam! Lays bam him dude out. got dropped! And I- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to tell you, I Lights really out, I wanted to make it down to that event so bad Saturday night, but we went out Friday, and I did not wake up until Sunday. I didn't think you were waking up. I, <laughs> I saw you when I left Friday night. I was like, dude, did just you go to that thing, that, the Lou thing? I, I was there for a hot one. I we were at long. the Mandalay. But actually, Jay Haran joined us. I know, Robin I, I was Leach with, was there. I was Robin with Jay Leach. the next day at, at a baby shower for Gray, and he was like, yo, yo, kid, I thought you was going to come, man. Lou told me you was coming. <laughs> I'm like, ah, no, I had to work. I didn't get done late. Oh, yo, it was cool, yo. Yeah, it, it was, yo, it was, it was, it was a great yeah, venue, definitely. Milo. Yeah, yeah it, it was we cool. were eating octopus. <laughs> we were drinking. I was uh, eating octopus. Oh, I was. A, well, that's the one thing. Phil does not like seafood. And there was a lot of seafood there last night. Yeah, it was rough. I hit the Benihana table. <laughs> All right, but they had a big pool, Phil. You could have, you could have swam. Could have showed off your swimming skills. Uh, they weren't allowing people in the water. I tried. Well, well you're right. a fish, Phil. You're a fish. You're not a person. He's a fish. He says he won't eat other fish because he doesn't eat his own. It's kind. cannibalism. Cannibalism. Man. cannibalism. I don't believe in it. Hey, have you guys seen uh, back to? Tyrone Spawn real quick. You guys had a chance to check out that little documentary, half an hour documentary on him on Vimo called The King of the Ring. I, I saw a little bit of it, and, and we had talked about this yeah. earlier, about just uh, watching a young Alistair Overeem in oh, there. It was very cool. Young, yeah. skinny Tyrone Spawn looked like he was about 160 pounds, and, and a, a very young, very skinny, still shredded, but very skinny Alistair Overeem looking like he was about 180 pounds. Pretty, Very cool, very good music. It's by the guys who do the, the, the little miniseries The Ream. So uh, if you haven't Which seen is an it, awesome yeah, series. it's awesome. But go check this out. This is very cool. And Tyrone Spawn, dude, uh, I I liked what he was saying. He really, uh, you know, you're always wondering about how a guy's going to do transitioning from mixed martial arts or from kickboxing to mixed martial arts. But when he talked about, you know, how he was learning wrestling, and I said, are you just learning a sprawling bar? You're learning the art. And he said, it's like a book. You don't start the book in the middle. You start at the beginning. So I had to learn at the very beginning of the art, and I'm an athlete. And don't be surprised if you see me take someone down. That was awesome. Yeah, I want. I hope. I want to see the weight cut. I want to see if he's got the ability to cut weight. You know. You know what? Fighting at two hundred five. Look where he's at. Yeah. True. With the wrestlers, absolutely. He's, he's got a strong wrestling team with him. Um, guys who are black belts in the art of cutting weight. I'm sure he's going to be just fine. 
Now, speaking, of course, naturally about Spong, who's fighting on November 3rd. And on the line joining us, I told you at the top of the hour, is joining us Strike Force heavyweight Daniel Cormier, who was supposed to fight on November 3rd in Strike Force <coughs> on Showtime. Daniel, what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? How you guys doing? We're doing great, man. Thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, Daniel, what's going on here? What's the future? Tell us a little bit about what, what, what your thoughts are as far as the cancellation of the card on November 3rd on Showtime. So I mean, it was pretty upsetting. And, you know, I had been through a, a full training camp. Uh, I, I had gone through it about seven weeks already, a three-week pre-camp and about a four-week actual actual camp. Uh, and that was um, only about three weeks from the fight. So uh, that was upsetting. And uh, obviously losing Frank Mir before was upsetting. But, you know, uh, I've kind of gotten over it now. I'm just moving forward and word on what's next. Hey, hey, Daniel, do they, before they announce the cancellation, do they give you a list of potential replacements for Frank Mir? Or were there any rumors? Did you hear any names that you could be fighting instead? Uh, all I heard was when uh, the Matt Mitrione deal. That was uh, that was it. You know, I didn't have any idea. Uh, we would ask them, and um, they were just saying that, uh, you know, we're trying to find someone. We're trying to find someone. So uh, I never knew, which was kind of odd. You know, I thought, I thought maybe I would have heard something, but. You know, um, I guess they were having a little more trouble than they anticipated. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. You know, one of the you know Daniel Cormier, one of the biggest prospects, like, no. the heavyweight prospects right well, now. The, the question actually that comes up is, how long were you willing to wait? I mean, you're sitting there and you're like three weeks out from the fight and you don't have an opponent yet. Would there have been a time where you're like, okay, that's it. You haven't given me anyone. I'm not fighting. You know, man, I'm of the belief that if uh, – I do everything I'm supposed to do the correct way on fight night. Most times it won't matter who they put in front of me. So I love if I, I love train the right answer. way, if I train the right way, have the right mindset, and do everything the right way heading into a fight, then the majority of the time it will take care of itself. It's just like wrestling. You know, if you do what you're supposed to do in training camp, when it's time to step on the mat, it does not matter who, who wrestles and who wins. So uh, that's, I've taken that same mindset into fighting. Um, I probably would have actually just went right into the fight. Guy could have just showed up in Oklahoma City. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Pull someone from the crowd. <laughs> uh, now, of course, there's talks of another fight card happening in Strike Force on Showtime, January 2013. Have you heard anything about this and what the fight card might hold? Uh, just that it's going to be a good, good, uh, a great fight card. You know, um, Strike Force with the guys that they have, they still have the ability to put on a really, really big fight card. If you throw. Rock hold on there, myself, Gil Melendez, Nate Marquardt. I mean, that's a that's a quality fight card. And if they're going to put even two of those four guys on the card, I think it makes it a pretty solid card. That's why I think November was shaping up to be so good because it was myself and Luke. Yeah. Um, and May, when I fought Josh, was so good because it was me and Gilbert and Josh Thompson. You know, so it was a number. If you start putting a combination of the the uh, four guys in the uh, in Strike Force, our Ronda. On one card, uh, then I think you uh, start putting together some pretty decent cards for the fans. Uh, I agree. Now, the question is, though, is will you be fighting on that card? Right, exactly. I've asked. You know, I've asked, and uh, I've, I've made it known so far that, that, that I, would, uh, I would really appreciate it if, uh, if I fought on that card. You know, mm -hmm. it's time for me to, uh, to get this and finish up this, this uh, contract and uh, move over and start the next phase of my career. Right, because, I mean, if he doesn't fight on this January 2013 card, I mean, he's going to have to wait, and it's only going to delay the, him getting to the UFC. Yeah. Put Daniel yeah. on that card, put Luke on that card, and then put Josh and Gilbert I four. Mean, it makes <laughs> all the sense in the world that Daniel Cormier has to be in that fight card in January. Has to be. Well, I said, I said this to the guys from uh, Inside MMA yesterday. You know, I when they say we're going to make a card that's stacked, um, I just hope that if you say, well, let's make a stack car, we throw Daniel on there, that makes that car a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? A little so bit no, better. No, 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 definitely. <laughs> That's a main D event right there. DC, when, when you talk about throwing a stack card, you've got to be at least the fourth or fifth person I think of to be on that. No, I'm just kidding. You're the first person I'm thinking of, brother. <laughs> you are the first fight that has to be on that card. Well, he, he, I think it's no question. I he, still want to see the mirror fight with you. I, honestly, yes, like, yes, I, I do. I want to see that. I agree. And that's my hope. You know, my hope is that, uh, that you know, with two months to heal. Because you got to remember, Frank pulled out that fight in September. So if, if we were to fight in January, that's September, October, November, December, 
that's five months to heal before the actual fight. Or three months, you know, three months, you know, say he's injured and, and two months later he can train. That still gives him two months to get into a good fight camp, you know. So um, even if he's not ready to start training by December 1st, you know, if we fight in the second week of January, that still gives him six weeks, which is plenty of time. I do believe he had surgery last week. I'm um, not. Oh, he a, did, so. Uh, yeah, so I'm not. different. I'm, yeah, so I don't know if that'll happen, but I know leading up to, you know, right after the fight got canceled, your name got thrown around a lot, especially on Twitter from a lot of fans saying they wanted to see you and John Jones uh, going head to head as coaches on the Ultimate Fighter. But yesterday yeah. it was announced that it was going to be Chael Sonnen. What were your thoughts yeah. when you heard that? Well, I mean, it was kind of a it was kind of a deal where, you know, they just went with what they felt was the the best option i guess you know you know guys like I, I i i was a little disappointed because i was hoping to get that but honestly that's kind of wishful for me you know i haven't even fought at that division before um i haven't fought the ufc so to get a big gig like coaching on the ultimate fighter would have been would have been huge you know so it was kind of a long shot for me but um in terms of the importance and the significance of the fight getting made between chael and john um I, I, I'm not the guy that should be upset. You know, it's the guys in his weight division that have been fighting and winning uh, that should have an uh, issue with, with uh, Chael Sonnen kind of jumping him. So, um, but what it does realistically is show me that I really don't have to fight at 205 and just get a title shot if I keep winning. That's the truth. That's it, the truth. It is. Now, but this is something you do plan on doing, right? You do maybe plan on coming down to 205? Well, I mean, that's, uh, if, yeah, I mean, I've got to get some Twitter followers first before I ever get a chance to fight Jones. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I better get some more followers and then go down to the way. Well, 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 what do you, fight me, I guess. Jones what do you, wants nothing to do with yeah, you. Yeah, what do you think about that? You know, Jones sitting there uh, saying that you're not relevant enough. I mean, you're talking about the guy that just won the strike for his heavyweight Grand Prix, top, top prospect in the sport, and you don't want to face him because he's not relevant enough. And and he's already been punked by the guy a couple times yeah. off the record. So, I mean, like, I don't. I don't <laughs> I don't. I just don't know what what that based on. You know, I don't know what it's based on. Maybe just the number of followers I have on Twitter. You know, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to go back and see. You know, his number when he had ten fights. You know, I I, I bet it wouldn't be. You know, four hundred thousand. I bet it wasn't four hundred thousand. You know, so. Uh, I just don't know what it's based on. You know, I mean, when I fight, uh, the people from Showtime always tell me there are viewers. You know, it's it's the, the viewership's higher than normal. Uh. When I go to the event, people are wanting pictures and autographs. And um, I walk around town. People recognize me and talk to me. So I don't understand what it's based on, you know, especially since we're not around each other very much. So how would he know? Yeah, well, he, he definitely knows who you are. I think he's just I think he's ducking. I definitely do. Well, and, that, and that's the thing that that's that, that that's the thing that really kind of surprises me, because you know what? When it comes to guys like John Jones and, and uh, Anderson Silva and those guys, ducking and scared doesn't come to mind. I really don't. Those are two words that I wouldn't use when you talk about those guys. They're not afraid of anything. They're, so he, his belief must really be that I'm just not – it doesn't bring anything to the table at this point. Because you got to remember, this is the guy that said he didn't want to fight Lyoto again because it didn't sell enough pay-per-views. So he's looking at it on a different – he's looking at it differently now. Than uh than I think he was whenever he was making his way up and uh when he uh when he first got the belt. Yeah, see that that's where I think if that's if that be the case, then he's an idiot because you're talking about like like we're talking about you the the uh, national wrestling champion, all right, former Strike Force you know Grand Prix champ coming over to the UFC and it's sell millions of pay per views. It would sell millions. Wow. Do you think you could out trash talk Chael Sonnen? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's. Possible. I know you got the gift. No, I know you got the gift of gab. I, I, I've heard you've got the gift of gab. Secretly, Daniel has the gift of gab. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's got a black belt in diplomacy. You want, yeah, you don't want to be. Yeah, you don't want to be one of my best friends because you get it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speaking of one of your boys, uh, Luke Rockhold. Luke, I, I would it's his birthday today. Yeah, Luke, tell Luke we said happy birthday. But I would love to see Luke against a guy like Anderson. That's another pay per view I think would be great. Have the Strike Force middleweight champ come over facing a guy like Anderson Silva. Well, I mean, Luke's the one thing about Luke is you're not going to out athlete Luke. Like Anderson Silva, is such a phenomenal athlete. Um, but re realistically, 
he's no better athlete than Luke. Because when I tell you one thing, man, Rocco surprised me. His dad was a ball player, you know, played for the Warriors. His brother's a professional surfer. And when we do stuff, like at the picnics, Luke's the base, best, ball, best baseball player. I'm sorry. Luke's out there playing volleyball. We go play basketball. Luke's dunking the basketball. He's a, he's just like all he serves. The kid's a great athlete. So the one thing I wouldn't be afraid of is Luke getting out athlete uh, in a fight like that. And plus, he's really really big and he's mean. You watched him walk down Tim Kennedy with his hand down, trying to just punch him as hard as he could. And uh, obviously, he couldn't do that against somebody like Anderson Silva. But Luke does, Luke isn't afraid to get punched, and he's not afraid to be in a, in a war. I mean, the guy actually spars me and Kane. And when he gets ready for his fight, sometimes we rotate rounds on him. So could you imagine that? Like me and one, Kane and two, me and three, Kane and four, and then half on in his fifth round, we go two and a half, two and a half. You know, so you uh sounds like a death you squad. Can do that, you can fight anybody. I'd rather not imagine. Yeah, that, that sounds like a death <laughs> squad. Yeah. Well, a couple of times he jumped over the cage to get out. He's like, enough, <laughs> enough is enough. We were just making him wrestle a lot, you know, he just jumped clean. The guy goes, enough, Bob, and jump right over the cage. Dude. Like, I'm not doing it. Peace. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out of here. Hey, but see, he's done it, you know. I, don't, I would, too. I, I think I would have done it before I got to round two. I think you would have <laughs> ran out the gym when you saw him there. <laughs> like, oh, no way. Um, and we're all, like, giving, hey, we're all giving, like, daps and stuff. Like, all right, dude, tag. It's my turn. Go get him. Take him down. <laughs> we're all, like, excited. You know, Luke's tired and exhausted. He can hardly stand. We're all heavy. It's so funny. Well, one of the uh, cool things that uh, has been on TV or on the computer and on, I think it's on Nuvo, uh, Fight yeah. Factory, but re- badass show, man. It's been a lot of fun yeah. watching. Uh, what was it like having the cameras around you all the time, filming what it's like inside AKA? It was pretty cool, man. I mean, I think uh, we're hoping to get another season and um, hopefully it continues to grow. Uh, it was fun, man. You know, and I think you got to see more of, of Kane and, and more of myself and, more than you would normally see, even in those countdown shows that those guys do. You know, I think yep. you got a little, you got to dig a little deeper into our lives and into some of the things we go through uh, on a day to day basis, which is which is very important. You know, the countdown shows are are good, but you know, you're only getting 30 minutes of a guy's life. And it's all condensed. Whereas with the Fight Factory, you were getting different guys every week, and and uh, even some of the up and coming guys. You know, you got to know Gabriel Carrasco and. And uh, Ron Kessler, you know, and Davin right. Clark. That's some of the guys that we're hoping can become the next stars at AKA. Well, Daniel, thanks so much for joining us. And like I said, we really look forward to seeing you hopefully fight in January. In January. And hopefully, you're saying it right here on the MMA Fight Corner, you still want Frank Mir, right? Yes, I do want to fight Frank Mir. Frank, get healthy, buddy. Let's get it done. All yeah. right, man. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Daniel, come back and visit us anytime. And we want to thank you, the fight fan, for joining us on the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. We'll see you back here next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Till then, see ya.